raining. I didn't know it could rain this much in Florida. Don't wake anybody up. Everyone is asleep but me. The only way you'll ever survive traveling is getting up before everybody else. It's essential for your mental health. Especially if you go to visit great parents. This is gourmet sitting around here. There's been don't judge my amount of sugar. It's on my list of things not to do in 2024. But we're not talking. doing good. The bigger question is, how is his mother doing? His mother's a teensy bit tired. <clears throat> you know, what you have to do, well, I was telling you, you're waiting until 2024. What year are we in? Is it a 2022? <laughs> I struggle. It's true. Oh, now this, if you're going to be with my parents. You're my parents' friends. Do not tell them I brought them. <clears throat> my whole life, they have eaten papaya like Tic Tacs. I mean, this stuff, and they take like 15 at a time. You know, other people take antacids. Mm -hmm. Not them. They take papaya. used to have her game a little bit better. She would take these cookies and she would always put them on a plate with saran wrap over them. That's where I get all my amazing Today it's supposed to be 75 degrees. We're gonna go upstairs. 
will your parents be on any lives? Oh, yes, sir, Ree Bobby, they will. <clears throat> they typically, um, I keep them for the subscribers. It's just as freaking cold as it was yesterday. Because if you're a subscriber and pay $5 a month, you have to get something extra. <clears throat> and access to my dad is maybe worth $10 a month. Susan, I didn't buy the plastic spoons. My parents did. And I promise you, I have given them more coffee mugs. And this one is from the drugstore. Papaya is for indigestion. Eh, indigestion. <clears throat> so it's day two. I never thought there was a house like that in Miami. It looks like a northern home. So, yes, become a subscriber. So we are down in a place called Kibis Cane. Kibis Cane is an island off Miami. And it was a, um, I think I've got this right, coconut plantation. And a family owned it. Well, they ended up um, developing it after the war. And so it really kind of became an enclave for people coming back from the military. They started families here. Now, one interesting thing about Key Biscayne is you're 15 minutes from Miami, but you are... Um, basically living in a town like I live in, in North Carolina, with a few thousand people in it. So kids can ride their bikes, you can walk everywhere. It's only seven miles long. There's a national park on it, a state park. Um, obviously, it's surrounded by water. It's an island. And so it's become very posh. Hey, Terry, Merry Christmas. My friend Terry is coming down here tomorrow. Terry! Um, yes, it's freaking freezing. It's supposed to be 75 today, but I would bet one of my children that it will not get to 75. It's like 52 right now, and it's raining. So anyway, um, so Kibis Kane, my great, I mean, this is totally off subject, but it's interesting. My great uncle, my grandmother's brother, was a lived in Ohio, and he was a golf pro, and so he would come down here with my Aunt Pauline, my grandmother's sister, and their four kids, um, and they would come, the Littlers, and they would come and stay for the winter. Well, my grandparents, they would come and visit, so my dad would drive down here at Christmas, and it would take three days from Ohio to Miami. <clears throat> And they would come and visit. Well, my grandparents ended up loving it. So when my papa retired, he was an IRS, you know, fraud agent. Like, he was one of the people that would sort of sniff around and see if he thought you were paying taxes. Like, one time he, um, there was this guy in a movie theater, and he was, you know, saying he sold 18 tickets. So my papa got in the dumpster and counted up, like, 62 popcorn boxes. And that's how they caught him. He was like then why did you sell 62 boxes of popcorn and 18 tickets? I mean, the IRS, they'll get you. The high of 71 in Miami today. Well, I'll be shocked if it gets to 71. But <clears throat> anyway, my parents, my aunt and uncle, and my grandparents came down here, and they all bought a house together. And my grandparents lived in it forever. And this is still that house. Um, they added a pool when I was little. So I think they bought it when I was maybe, I don't know if I was born yet or not, early 70s. Um, and my parents now live here for six months and three days a year or something. But we rented it for a long time. And um, it's nice. It's a neat island. And we have some friends that grew up here. Um, so that's kind of fun, but that's totally aside. That has nothing to do with Christmas and autism and travel. 
which is really the, I thought, you know, every day I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to do a, a video on like this travel special needs thing, because I think it's super important. And I was telling my mom yesterday, I was like, you know, we are so thankful that we can come down here and stay. And part of it is that this place is familiar to me. I've grown up on this island. I rode bikes. I would steal people's, well, we didn't call it stealing, but my parents would tell us to go, you know, get grapefruits from the neighbor's yard so we could have them for breakfast. We'd go around and get coconuts and smash them on the street. There used to be the Miami Zoo was actually on Key Biscayne, and my papa made sure that all of us had a bike to ride. So there were bikes for 11 people, but I didn't have a bike. I rode on the back of my cousin Kristen's bike. My dad and cousins, they would go over to the Miami Sea Aquarium and pill for um, lobsters and have them for dinner. <laughs> I guess they would just take a claw and then bring them home. I mean, it's good times around here. That was what they called people that were key rats. Key Biscayne and rats. And I um, don't live here, but I have a few key rats myself. So my son, Thomas, and my son, Russell, yesterday had two friends from their school here. One's from, I think they're both from China, but one lives in Chicago and one lives somewhere else. Anyway, they went to the beach and they were like, we're going to go swimming. It's like, okay, well, it's nine degrees outside, but my mother was like, I mean, did they have warmer clothes? I was like, yes, they do. And have you noticed that no one listens to me? I mean, they don't care. <gasps> yes, last year, which I'm not sure what year that was, Jill, because I've skipped 2022. I slipped in the driveway and darn if I didn't have to go get stitches. Was that on Christmas night that I busted my knee? <laughs> so anything. I would give anything to have a place and a family to fly to. Yes, it is. it makes such, such, such a difference. Can't hear. Well, I can't yell because somebody might get up. And it requires a full day of attention giving. So Thomas went to the beach with the friends and they quickly decided that they weren't gonna give in. So then they went down to the Ritz Carlton now, this is the sore subject, especially on a big video, because there's some people that are highly against going in places where you're not a paying guest. My family is not one of those people. And I think there's, I mean, it's fun. It's not dangerous. It's entertaining. Amos is good. He's asleep. So, so, honestly, I was so proud that I raised children that were brave enough to go down to the Ritz-Carlton, and they asked for a towel. Mm. Mm -mm. Dang. You can't go down to the Ritz the day after Christmas and ask for a towel? I was like, you guys are amateurs. No. Oh. No, no way, Jose. If you're going to go to the Ritz the day after Christmas, Chris, holidays are big, Easter, Christmas, because everybody from New York wants to come down here and spend $1,300 a night on a hotel room because they're all smoking crack. It's true. So, yeah, you walk up the beach and swim there. So, they walked up there and they asked for the towel. Mm -mm. Novice mistake. There were four of them. One thing they should have done was they needed to have walked around and found some seats that were empty. And then you go around and you find some towels that other people have left on their chairs and you take those and you put the towels on your chairs and you read a little while and then one of you, you know, kind of walks around and then you have to say, you know, do y'all serve breakfast at the pool? You just random. And then you get in the pool or you go get in the hot tub. You don't ask for a towel. 
they're going to ask for the room number. I know. I mean, you don't see me asking for any towels. They never learned that from me. And then they were like, Ugh. well, at that point, they had two friends from China with them who were, you know, have American names and obviously speak English like I do. And I was like, you two should have started speaking in Chinese. This was your chance and acted like you didn't understand what they were saying. So if you're going to ask for towels, at least have somebody that speaks another language do it. And they were like, oh, gosh, you're right. Darn it. I wonder, I wonder if the nice friends, oh, God, they probably went home and told their parents that. Well, Mrs. Wood said what we should have done. <laughs> Can you share your baked ziti recipe? Yeah, but I'm not doing it today. It's on my subscriber recipe page. <laughs> I mean, children never listened to me. They were like taking notes. I said at one point, I, I, you can really do be smart. And you listen to what somebody else says with their name and their room number. And then you just say that. Because towels are free. It's not like they're charging you. So it's not like you're ordering a hamburger or something. The other thing you do is you always order off the children's menu if you go down there. The children's menu at the Ritz-Carlton <laughs> is like cheap. I mean, it's like $6.50 for chicken tenders. <laughs> Con lessons. So, it, you always order off the ch children's menu. When my husband and I were traveling, we were, I was pregnant with our second son, and we had gone, um, my parents had points and gave them to us, and we went to Mexico. And, oh, I wanna go to the Breakers in Palm Beach. And anyway, we, we have this free place to stay, but we had very little money. And so we would sit in the room and order, um, room service. And I bet those people thought we had like four kids. We'd be like, we need two grilled cheeses and <laughs> I mean, it's survival people, survival. Um, so yesterday my big boys were busy. We have this great place called the community center in Kibis Kane and it's like a building where they have basketball, pickleball, you can take gym classes, there's a pool, there's a big indoor play space, there's a room filled with like playstations and ping pong and air hockey and foosball. What's the name of the subscriber page? You're here, Fran, but this is a big video. So when I do a subscriber video, you will see a much lower number on the video, usually like 100 to 200. And we kind of talk about specific topics and do some little, I do a video over there every day, which down here, I've been doing one every day on the big page, but it's sort of a special occasion. It's a subscriber recruitment tool. Ritz-Carlton is very expensive. Well, hello, it's the Ritz-Carlton. I mean, there's a reason it ain't the Motel 6. Um, now y'all made me forget what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Let me see if I can trigger my memory. Hold on. So this is day two of vacation. And I was telling my mother, now that I've got sidetracked, I was like, I'm so thankful we can come down here. You know, when you belong to a person with special needs, everything is exacerbated. And traveling is really hard. And I have a person who loves to travel. If there's something he likes to do, it's travel. Oh, the rec center. Yes, we spent a, several hours at the rec center. And it was raining, which was nice. I have other friends, like my friend Kate Swinson, she has Finding Cooper's voice, and her son Cooper, 
he, he likes to stay home. I don't know how you could possibly or how you would ever take anybody somewhere that didn't want to go, with, that had autism or maybe special needs. I would sooner like take glass shards and poke at my corneas. I mean, that, that wouldn't even be possible. You would not go. And you know, you can have help. Like we have a caregiver and a um, slash nanny, but you know, she can't work all the time. You can't work on Christmas day. People need breaks. So you have to suck it up yourself. Amos does pretty well in this house because he has been here a bunch of times and this house is pretty well located. So we have a roll away bed in our bedroom, which is good. Same one we have in Edenton. So he knows that's his bed. He's been sleeping really well in the rollaway bed. He no longer needs a bedroom at home because he does not set a toe in there. And my pediatric psychiatrist was like, you know what? We have bigger fish to fry than worrying about where he's sleeping. We're going to just let that go for right now, which is huge. You know that you, um, you just can't do it all. We don't travel together for that reason. I long for a nanny type person in our lives. I'll tell you what, Colleen. Um, and a lot of people don't know this because somebody might say, well, you have money, um, which is true. We do have more money than a lot of people do. Maybe not the people at the Ritz-Carlton, but um, with the giant poodle service dog. And I was like, did the dog fly? They're like, oh, we fly, we fly private. I was like, I know damn well that dog ain't fitting under a seat. I mean, that dog was like the size of my son Thomas. Anyway, um, They've sucked my brain out. Oh, a caregiver person. So we um, are on the waiver wait list. So there's this thing called the waiver for unmet needs and it's all over the country and it's funded through Medicaid. And years ago, one thing that a lot of you might not know is that in the United States, we have always taken care of people with disabilities. But long ago, we put them in institutions and we've, most of us have learned that institutions are not where we want people or want loved ones to be. So they took the money that was funding institutions and put it into this waiver. So families of children with disabilities can apply. We've been on the wait list now for six years. At the time they told us seven, but it could be as much as 13. And we, um, why we're on the wait list because of where we live in North Carolina, every state does it different. We get 25 hours a week of developmental therapy and 40 hours a month of respite. So that helps pay for our caregiver. And then we pay um, for additional time with her ourselves, which is nice that we can do that. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's something I always like to clarify because a lot of people don't know that. And this year I'm sort of excited. I'm doing some, um, I'm doing some big free things, which you might be like, oh, cry me a river. But I'm doing a big um, fundraising event for the North Carolina Autism Society in Wilmington this spring. And last time they made, they raised $400,000. So that's a big deal. So I'm giving my time to that. I'm doing a caregivers conference in Minnesota but my friend Kate Swenson asked me. She puts on a conference there with a couple people. So I'm really excited about that. There's be lots of moms there, maybe some dads who are caregivers who are getting away for the weekend. And it's really exciting. And then I'm doing a year-long social media campaign with Trillium. And Trillium is my family's care provider where we live in North Carolina. And we're going to do four different video series post of a day in the life of Amos or the day in the life of a client with Trillium. And that's really exciting. Um, I think I was the type of person that thought if you need, you have Medicaid, you're lazy. I mean, I'm just gonna be honest. I didn't really know how Medicaid worked. And, um, now that I do, I think it's important to share that kind of stuff with other people. And some people might say, well, your family has money, you know, you shouldn't do that. But you know, 
I would disagree. Amos is going to require care and for his whole life. And let's just say, no, the waiver is not income-based. When he's 32 and he needs health insurance, he'll have Medicaid. Because if I'm not around to do it, the system is not set up that Adrian can buy her 32-year-old medical insurance. Um, it would be very expensive. And that is not... Um, that's not what we do in the United States. And I think it's great. You know, we're paying 40000 for people to sit their asses in prison. I think it's good that we take care of people with disabilities. So, yes, if you belong to a person with um, disabilities, you should check out what your state does for the waiver because it's really important, and I find that a lot of people don't, don't know it. So, anyway. I'm always glad to answer questions about that. Hold on, let me, my coffee's cold because it's freaking freezing outside. So last night we opened Christmas presents with my parents, which was really fun. And I built Amos a Lego. And so Amos at Christmas is, I remember the when he was a tiny fella, well, he didn't even understand Christmas. And he cried and didn't want to be in the room. And I cried. I was so sad. I was reading this the other day. Well, over time I've learned, like, Amos is not going to be an active part of Christmas morning. But he is active. So, like, at home, he has a little playroom kind of off our main living room, which is really important. Yes, Marla is one of my subscribers with disabilities. And she lives in supportive living, and she gets 15 hours of staffing a week. Um, can you post the info on the waiver page? I'll do a subscriber waiver video, okay? We'll get that done in the next week or two. Um, let's see if my coffee is warm. So Amos is never a really active part of Christmas morning, and... I was so proud of my daughter because she wants him to be part of everything. And I said, you know, sissy, we're going to just let him kind of hang out in his playroom. She was like, he never opens all his presents. Well, this year I got him way, way fewer presents. And we generally, we generally wrap presents in our house. I know a lot of people do this kind of, you walk in and they're all unwrapped. But growing up in my family, there was maybe like if you got a dollhouse or a go-kart or pinball machine, it wasn't wrapped. But everything else was. And we, you know, every family does Christmas different. But in our family, my husband's family, they didn't wrap. And we tried that one year. And we were like, this wasn't as fun. So we wrap. And we take turns opening presents. So we're not all opening at the same time. And we're, so it's kind of quiet, which is probably nice for Amos. So Amos, all he wanted for Christmas were 900 minifigures. He did not get that many. But he got a great big box that I bought off Craigslist of Star Wars people. And he was thrilled with them. And I gave them to him. And then I said, oh, we all said, can we play with them? He said, no. And he took him to his playroom. And then he would come out and show us one. And he'd go back in there again. And um, that was enough for him. And that's okay. And the rest of us sat in open presents. So last night with my parents... I said, you know, why don't we do presents tonight? We'd gotten here super late on Christmas night, and my ch daughter particularly was about to bounce off the walls. And um, we, he, my mom had gotten him, like, 12 superhero Lego books. So he loves minifigures, and he loves books. Very particular about what books he likes, particularly right now, Lego books. So he loves books. Um, and love to you, Kathleen. He came in. He opened up his books, which mom just had in a gift bag. He didn't have to unwrap anything. And he sat down and started reading those books. Well, he wanted me to cop. He was a part of things. He was excited to be a part of things. And it was so fun because it was a little chaotic. You know, we had... Thomas got some boots, Russell got a coat, we were laughing, you know, anyway, um, it was fun, and it was fun, I think, for my parents 
to see um, to see how it can work, you know, because I think my mother is pretty understanding, but I think it's hard for my dad, you know. I think he, one time he said, like, well, he did that on purpose. He had, like, thrown something, and I was like, yeah, you know, it's not a tantrum, but a meltdown, you know, like explaining the difference when you belong to somebody with special needs of how it's different. And that's, that sort of is one of the hard parts about traveling is that your anxiety is up here, right? Not just the, the act of getting somewhere, which is fairly stressful, but when you're here, you're kind of on this mode, right? Like what's going to happen next? Because there are new people into the equation and I have to be thinking about them and what he's going to do. And there's all this glass and there might be a cup and he's, you know, Amos will break something. And at home, we've got things pretty well. So we can't break things, but like, look right there. So there's like vodka bottles. So that would be an area that I would think, oh my gosh, what if Amos came out here and was upset? He could break like 12 bottles at one time and not because he thinks I want to break those bottles, but because he's upset. Yes, Colleen. Um, and, but anyway, but he's done really well. The other thing we have to do is plan, plan, plan for activities. So at that point, and this is one thing I've had to learn too, but when you have small children without special needs, they're tiring to take on vacation. Like yesterday I was thinking, this is actually easier than it was when I had a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a baby. Because those fools would get up, you'd be trying to get them in bathing suits and sunscreen, and they'd be crying and fighting and whining, and it was tiring. Where they're now pretty good, and Amos though, and he now will say, what are we going to do now? So we have his little board and we write like three things we're gonna do. So yesterday we went to the community center. I had called to find out what time his age group could go in. So you have to do all this planning. Let me just tell you something right now. My name, my middle name is, her ass ain't never planned anything. Adrian, her ass ain't never planned anything. You do what you have to do. It's a true story. If, if I don't do things like that, it will make your life H-E double hockey steps. And we try to be a little flexible. Like, it opened at 1030. Well, he was happy reading books. My son, Thomas and Russell, had their friends come in. I wanted to meet them. And so we went at 1130. We stayed until... About one, then my husband and I took him to the playground, came home, rested a long time, and then we went off on our trip. What's the difference between doing something on purses versus having a meltdown and breaking things? So I would say in a meltdown, I mean, he is picking up something and maybe throwing it, but a meltdown is more a cause from sensory. A tantrum, when you have a tantrum, what somebody said to me one time, you're you're having a great big noisy fuss because you want something, right? So your child wants ice cream. And you say no, and they throw themselves on the floor kicking and screaming. And if you give them the ice cream, they'll be fine. A meltdown is I am so hyper stimulated that I can't get myself regulated. That's the difference. Um, that's the difference. So, it's different. Um, he had really, on the way here, Amos, one of his, it could be a fault, it could be positive if he were a travel blogger, but he's not. He loves currently all types of transportation. He has never been on accordion bus. Do you know what an accordion bus is? I did, but I hadn't. We saw one yesterday, so now he's got that in his little brain. But anyway, he's been wanting to go on this high-speed train in Germany. Obviously, we're not, ooh, a Lego event in Norfolk in February. We're not going to Germany because that would be a very long flight for Amos, getting older and more mature. Yes, oh, I definitely think that happens. 
I saw a young man, I can spot young adults with autism a mile away in the airport. Oftentimes, you know, they might have something, they might be wearing something that you might think that's unusual for a 20 year old. And there's usually, they're touching themselves a lot and moving their hands, um, kind of smiling. So I saw a young man get on the plane and I smiled at his mom in a way that only special needs moms can smile at each other, maybe dads, like, you know, and gave her the thumbs up, like, you know, that's okay. That's, it's good to be acknowledged, you know, without having a long, bleh, 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 talk. I'm so glad you're here. Um, but, so yesterday, he had wanted to go on the bus and I've ridden on public transportation, but like when I lived in Aspen, I mean, I've never ridden on public transportation in Miami because my parents have a car, but my papa, my grandfather always wanted to ride on the Metro. And my dad has always said, you know, we never did it. And I wish I had done that. Well, suddenly you have an Amos and you are doing new things. If I didn't have Amos, I wouldn't have gotten on that dirt Metro yesterday because it was raining and cold and my whole life I've spent down here, we've never gotten on the Metro. So he and I took the bus, went to the Metro station. We didn't know how to do any of those things. I think another thing belonging to him is that you, you just ask people to help you. Like people want to help. There was a police officer standing there. I was like, tell me how this works. He was like, well, you go up here. I said, well, where do you, if you want to go to Dadeland Mall, where well, you're going to go to the Dadeland exit, I go over and look at the thing to buy the tickets and it's talking about a bank card. And I said, can you help me buy a ticket? <laughs> he was like, sure. He was like, you don't have to buy one for him. You're gonna buy one. Now, are you doing a one way or round trip? I was like, round trip. He helped me do it, showed me where to scan it. He said, go up and get on the South train. We got up there and it's two long escalators up. And it's, I would say to a family, now that I know, um, was a little bit dangerous for a child with special needs. Not that anything can be done about it, but I would advise any family, you were two stories up and there was no railing. So Amos doesn't like to have a hand held. So that was something that we really, um, that was when I don't take our service dog somewhere that I haven't been before with him because I need to know exactly what we're getting into. And it would be hard to juggle her and him. And obviously keeping him safe is the priority and keeping her safe is a priority. So I can't always do that by myself. So like flying down here, my husband being with us made the biggest difference because if she has to go to the bathroom or if she needs something, I can take her and he can be in charge of Amos. So taking the train to a mall in South Florida is not something I would probably do alone with him. We're not there yet, maybe someday, but we need another adult human. Um, I don't like escalators. Well, Honor cannot go on an escalator. So no dogs on escalators, FYI. So anyway, we took the train, we went to Dadeland Mall there were two Dadeland Mall exits, and this is sort of long-winded, so if y'all got shit to do, go on about your business. And I was like, what exit? I'm Googling, like, what exit do you take? I can't figure it out. I'm looking at the map, like, I really thought I need to take the first, the first map, the first one. Well, there was a woman behind us, and I said, do you know what exit to take to go to Dadeland Mall? And she said, yeah, take the second one. I work there. And I said, oh, where do you work? She said, I work at Shake Shack. Um, I said, well, I'm Adrian. She said, I'm Tara. And I said, do you mind if we follow you over there? And she was like, no, I don't mind at all. And I said, well, are you in a hurry? You know, I don't. She said, no, it's fine. We'll get down and then I can walk ahead. Well, Amos, I will say he is fast. So we walked with her about three blocks and she showed us the way. And you know, she has four children. They're like 27 to 17. And we were 
I was saying, I've never been on the Metro before and this is awesome. And she was like, yeah, it's, there's no traffic and you don't pay for gas. I was like, no, it's pretty cool, honestly. And you get a little exercise. I mean, I came home and told my mother, there's no reason for us to ever drive to that mall again. It takes an hour to get there. So anyway, we had a plan. We were going to go in there and we went to the Lego store and we went to the Lego store. We got some minifigures in a speedboat, and then we got back on the Metro. We found our policeman friend and said, what bus do we need to get on? He said, bus B, it's the second stop. Thank God it stood at the stop. Um, and then the bus came for little Havana, and Amos was like, Hi, bus driver. I said, I don't think that's our bus. He was like, that's a batty bus going to hell. And people will say like, well, you cuss. That's where he gets it. No, he watches some Lego show. As my children said, it's like he, he picks up on, there could be one sentence like that in an entire movie. And he is going to store it in his space. Mm -hmm. Batty bus is going to hell. Um, and then <laughs> there were a few people that did not have homes. I don't know if it's politically correct to call somebody homeless, but they clearly didn't. They had all their belongings in the under the bus thing. Well, Amos, you know, most people might smile at someone homeless or maybe they give them something, but they're not, there's not a lot of talking. Amos, um, Amos doesn't care. I mean, you could be the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, or you could be a woman with socks on and flip-flops and sunglasses, and Amos is going to talk to you the same. He has absolutely no discretion in who he's speaking to. And I, I think I used to be a little more like this, but now I love it, especially down here in this place where, you know, there are a lot of people that really don't want they seem very unapproachable. And he would get in front of them, like at that mall, and he's like, hi. Well, I mean, nothing like a woman laden with Gucci packages to be like, who is this person with these orange glasses? You know, hi, bye. Or what is your name? <laughs> or welcome to the mall, just say it. <laughs> and then I have to say to the person, he would like you to say welcome to the mall. And I'm sure they're like, you have lost your marbles. <laughs> but anyway, the woman under the bus shelter, Amos is nine. He was like, hi. And she, I don't know if she said hi back. Well, then he got in her space, which she did not like. And I was like, Amos, back up with mommy. She goes, I said hi. Can he not hear? I said, no, he's deaf. Because I didn't want her getting upset. It's like, oh, which is probably a terrible lie, I know, but I was just trying to get it under control in that minute. Does it worry you when he is older? Yes, it is harder. It He is harder as he's bigger. When he was a little fella, I could pick him up. I struggle to pick him up now. I mean, I think it's one reason that we really want his medicine right. You know, he takes... Um, ADHD medicine, anxiety medicine, he takes medicine to sleep because when he has good sleep, then his behavior is better. Um, the medicine is not perfect right now. We always have a little bit of trouble, um, but he's doing pretty well. He definitely struggles when you say the word no, like it is sparks a really visceral reaction in him, which I don't understand. But anyway, so having his medicine good really helps him with transitions and getting his shoes on or, um, but yeah, there was one morning a couple weeks ago and I was telling my subscribers, I couldn't have gotten him downstairs. I mean, I, he woke up ill as a hornet and I, my husband finally carried him down and made it a game. It was a Monday. He had been out of school a few days. Maybe it was after Thanksgiving. And I was like, I can't, you can't carry a nine-year-old down the stairs, you know? 
Allison, it's harder with our son being older. The cuteness wears off and questions and stares become more frequent. Allison, I totally get that. You know, it's funny when I look back, um, I remember being terrified of Amos turning three. And now I'm like, three? I mean, three is basically like somebody at your teat. I mean, but it was because, and I acknowledged it then, boy, he, um, when you're two, any behavior can be explained away with being two. People can break stuff, they can roll around on the floor, and you'd be like, well, they're two. I mean, you know, we, we give a lot of room for two. So I think, um, yes, Diana, Diane, that's exactly right. I think we're working through that, and um, he's nine now. And I will say that I phrase it another way because a lot of kids, I need to look into this, need to know the why, and it does not allow for conversation. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I try to have him look nice, which granted, maybe that's being privileged that we can do that. But, you know, my, my other sons at nine were probably wearing Under Armour sports clothes. And look, my husband, I think at that age, my oldest son looked like a highlighter, like he wore bright yellow, which is actually probably smart because I could see him. But Amos had on blue corduroy pants, Uggs, a bright orange Patagonia jacket, his orange glasses. You know, he looked like he was in an ad. And I do that for the reason of people respond better to people that look nice, which is also just the way of the world. I mean, I tell my children that. You need to look nice when you arrive somewhere. Put on a button down and khaki pants, you know. Look nice because the world judges you on that first image, which they shouldn't do. And I think we're learning not to do that, but that might get you in the door. So if Amos looks good and acts like that, they might say, okay, well, I'm going to learn more. Not just look at that terribly well unwell-kempt child. Also having honor. The service dog, I think, helps because um, she's sort of an a, what would she be? Um, she's sort of like our sign of like, boy, we have special needs and that's helpful. And I noticed it that I, I really felt like flying in the air, airport this time was better because I, there was no judgment and I'm used to no judgment in my town. Everybody knows Amos where I live. I mean, everybody. You could be the public works guy in the coffee shop, a teacher at school, somebody downtown. I mean, literally everybody knows Amos and people tend to generally like him. And, um, but when we're in big new places, they don't know us. And so honor being there really welcomes, um, makes him a little more welcome, I think, and makes our family more welcome, which was super nice. Yeah, maybe a buffer is the right word. I was thinking almost like she's kind of a, yeah, maybe it's buffer. So this is, my subscriber page is the same thing, Jen, but like right now, this is a video on the big page. I do daily subscriber videos, so it's a smaller group of people. And we do sort of certain topics. We have a book club. Um, it's usually my family is more involved in subscriber stuff just because it's a little bit of a smaller group and you don't have people asking for sex or cash apps and stuff. Um, so it's fun. It's a smaller group. We're getting ready to go on a cruise. We have almost 100 people signed up to go on a cruise in January. Last year, I had 180 people come and did a weekend event um, in my town. So it's a fun, it's a fun group. It's $5 a month. Um, so anyway, so if you just want something a little bit better, and I get it, listen, I never read a blog, I never subscribed to anything, and then I started doing it. So no judgment here, but it's, it's fun. Early on, how did his siblings get aggravated? Um, you know, they still get aggravated. I think like at the airport, I said, Daddy's going to keep Amos, and I'm going to take Honor out. They're like, Daddy can't handle Amos. I was like, he's going to be fine. He has his Legos. So I think there is a lot of 
dependence on me to keep everything under control, which is just at least the way it is in our family. Um, now today, I'm going to a doctor's appointment with my parents. Daddy and the other kids will be in charge. And um, yes, I totally agree, Cynthia. That's why I was trying to get Amos uh, away from the woman because I, I didn't want her to get put in a position where she couldn't handle him. So I just thought I'm gonna deescalate and move him out of the space. Um, though it was raining and he wanted to sit in under the bus shelter, but we had to deal with that. So anyway, um, I'll have a plan for them. I'll give him his medicine before they go. I'm gonna go in and make some blueberry muffins in a minute. It's kind of rainy, so they can't go to the playground. So normally when we're down here, it's nice because we can spend a lot of time outside. So they will go inside to the play gym at 10.30, and um, yesterday I was kind of able to say, hey, is it okay if he stays in with the little kids too? And they were like, it's no problem. So that can be kind of hard. I'm a little worried about that. How do you take him up there and then make him leave? Because he, that's hard transitioning. Um, so if it's not pouring, they could go outside. So you have to kind of say, okay, now we're gonna go do this. Um, so they're gonna do that. And then we have a good, a little boy that I used to babysit for named Billy, who's now in his 30s. He's down here. He's the director of admissions at a boarding school called Christ Church. So he's gonna come over and have dinner with us tonight. So we'll come up with some activity this afternoon and get Amos worn out um, before he comes. And, Billy knows him and is used to chaos. Um, so anyway, so I think it'll be okay. It's just a, an intense amount of planning. And when you're not a planner, I mean, it would be like, it, it's basically so out of my comfort zone that I feel like people are like, you should start training for a marathon. I didn't even run when I was thin and 15. I mean, I would get like so winded during field hockey practice. I mean, I ain't a runner. <laughs> you know, I, this is not the life I envisioned for myself. Like I didn't choose this. I wouldn't have, Amos was not on my bucket list. And there are people out there that are like, I want to adopt a child with special needs. In fact, there's a new family in our town and she was telling me that. And I am like, wow. And I thought to myself, I think I said to her, y'all should have Amos over for the weekend. <laughs> she was like, yes. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, no. Way. No, but in all seriousness, you know, I, I share because think there are a lot of things about me that are pretty like typical and you know I grew up in an upper middle class family I mean hell I was a debutante even though my parents were Yankees I have a PhD and you know you might see people like me and they're not talking and they're not telling and they keep it all together on the outside and it makes you feel not good on the inside. And I want people that maybe are unwilling to listen to see me and say, well, she could be like me. And now she's telling these things and maybe I'm gonna learn something because I was them, you know? And um, to whom much is given, much is expected. And I just, really feel a push um, and a calling to share, not in a whiny, woe is me way, but in a, boy, we have a lot to learn from each other. And I wish I had been learning when I was, before I was me, you know? <clears throat> so, yeah, it's important. Um, 
And when I started doing this, actually, funny enough, it was t 2015, and <coughs> which is, depending on what year you say it is, seven or eight years. Oh, thank you, Barbara. I started sharing, and you know, I was looking at my first post, and all the people that commented were my friends. And it was like this push, you know, and now my friends are like, oh my God, we cannot watch her videos, you know, she's, but I needed people to understand and see, um, and needed it not to weigh me down because I was so scared. I just was terrified. You know, I had planned on having these, this fourth child and he was going to just be like, fourth children are, you know, he's a fourth kid, he's running around and crazy and trying to keep up with his siblings and bucking the shit out of them, and, um, he wasn't going to be that person, and it was, it was going to swallow me, and I didn't want that to happen, you know, I had lost this, my only sibling, my brother, to cancer, and, he was gone off this planet, and so I had, I had experienced the type of grief that, you know, your sibling is your closest genetic tie, and my person was gone, and um, I had this little boy who I was grieving, but he wasn't going to die, you know, I wasn't going to go to his funeral, and it required something different, so I had to live, which involved talking. Oh my gosh, somebody just said, maybe try to strengthen your legs and then attempt running. I will say to you, I was inspired to, I used to smoke. I know, go ape shit. I love smoking. I don't smoke anymore. It's been almost a year. I'm still 20% less fun since I quit smoking. And I've lost, I was 186, now I'm at like 153, 5 lost 30 pounds, and, um, because I was like, I have not only Amos, but three other children. They need me, and I need to be in better shape so I can catch him. Honestly, if you are chubby and you have somebody with autism who is fast, you're in trouble. I do, so I do this weekly shot because I can't remember playing anything. It's just once a week. It's called Wagovi. Oh, and we have a PA who sees a lot of my subscribers, and she does videos on my subscriber page, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, anyway. So, I mean, there's something to that. I mean, you got to be in good shape. Or you're in trouble. You took yourself and made huge life changes. Ugh. I'm going to start smoking again. I don't know what age it's going to be. I used to say 80. Now I'm thinking like 92. Um, and you know, Melanie, it's interesting. There are people, there's, um, there's several different Facebook pages or social media pages that really, and people that are actually autistic, like there's one called actually autistic, they get very upset about um, talking about grief. This is so boring. This is bullshit. Well, bullshit's not boring. Mm -hmm. Bullshit's sort of a trigger. So it can't be both thin ZZ. Chubby girl with the fast autism runner. You're not kidding, right? I mean, we need to talk about this. My sibling took my inheritance. That's not what we're talking about today. But I'm sorry that happened. Um, what was I just saying? I get so distracted. I think I have ADHD and I didn't even know it. Oh, the boring and bullshit. Um, I can't remember. I can forget. It wasn't on my daughter's bucket list either. Oh, here they come. That's why the subscriber page is good. Would you recommend Wagovi? Hell yeah, I would. Yeah, it makes you think like a thin person. Suddenly, I'm not starved every eight seconds. Let me see if I see Amos in here. I see Amos. 
see the dog. Oh. Oh. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Did you sleep good? Hi. What is today? What is today? Today is what day? What day is today? Tuesday. 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 Is it still kind of cold and rainy? Do you want to go to the indoor playground today? No. You don't? Blueberry muffins. Oh, what's that? Honor. Is this for Amos? I think so. Would you like to open it? Yes. I like opening presents this time of day. Quiet. Guess what it is. Guess what it is. That's right. That's what we said last night, didn't we? What are you guessing? What is it? It's a... Honor. What is it? It's a... <laughs> Mom, will you let her out? What is it? It's a shirt. A shirt. What's on it? What's on it? Do you like it? Does it have flags? Oh, what flag is that? The. The who? The uh, who? Uh. I need to watch the backyard again. You need to watch the backyard again. In bed. Is Daddy still asleep? <laughs> he, he meant to say thank you. <laughs> See? Carry on, people. Subscribers. See you later today.